so hi all welcome to the d4 session on test automation by testology the agenda for today is to talk about what is test automation basically the ui test automation what is selenium and why it is important how to add selenium library in the project okay in the java project i should say and how to add, automate a simple test scenario using selenium okay so basically ui test automation uh, is related to web application right so we have many web applications around us you are going to purchase some items from the shopping website you are going to book a ticket from the ticket booking website or like make my trip right and you are going to use your company's website to just test it that the ui of that particular website is working fine or not okay so basically uh, I, I can show you some uh, testing websites that we have so let's say this is one website in front of us okay and you are able to see that there is a button there are some links in this header right and uh, there is some text here uh, there is some text here right now we are able to see a web application in front of us we know that these things are expected here right but now this is just one view of a website right one page of a website now in future they are there are going to be many pages going to be added right here so if if i simply say a website like microsoft documents right so if i just search for this then there might be a, a link or or simply google documents so where we have many many kind of uh, pages of a website and uh, simply you you have like a, a library of pages right and you need to make sure that those pages have the data in correct manner okay you can see this google docs api google developers and if i go here right so reference and there must there must be something that you may need to test right and you can see here go java and many things are there the actions that you are able to perform such such actions you should be able to perform in future also irrespective of the changes that the developer is doing okay alongside you so you are a tester and uh, you are a qa automation engineer or a developer it doesn't matter who is using selenium or who is doing the ui test automation right important thing is we need to make sure that all things that we are able to see now should work fine tomorrow right uh, like considering even the changes are done by some developers even thousands of developers are working on the same website uh, there is a high possibility that the changes from one developer the code changes on this website from one developer can break the you know changes done by other developer this explore button this might fade away right and uh, when i click on this login link then it might happen that this link should not take me to this page and when i click on this login button uh, then there is a possibility that uh, the login should not happen right so in many ways this website can break okay this test.techlift.in right this is just a testing website so that is what we need to make sure with the help of ui test automation right we need to add the tests on this login link on this blog link on the tech lift test logo right on this explore button we need to add the test cases we need to automate some scenarios what are these things in front of us this is a web application a ui we are able to see these are called as web elements okay web elements or simply elements you can call it like html elements and if you just right click here okay just right click okay on a website 
on this testing website, just inspect, select this option of inspect. Okay. And then oh, I will close this. Fine. So, and then you should be able to see the HTML source code. Okay. This is HTML source. Now, if you want to learn HTML, you can go to w3schools.com and learn it there because uh, it's a very good website and they have a very good documentation about learning HTML, right? But I would tell you this is an element. Okay. This is an element. And what is this angular brackets uh, starting with? This is a tag head tag. Okay. And uh, inside that there is a, some content. I will expand this. Okay. Inside the head tag, we have many more tags and this one tag completely from this angular bracket till this angular bracket. It is called as an element. Okay. So element is basically a particular uh, object on this web page on which we can perform the actions. Okay. But uh, before the element comes into picture, there is a tag in which the HTML is written for that element. Okay. So this is a tag. I will zoom in for you. Fine. I hope you are able to see it clearly now. So this is a div tag. Okay. And when I hover on this, it, it highlights something here, right? So this is going to be a very helpful thing. Find, uh, like looking at the HTML source of this UI. Okay. Because uh, XPath, CSS, locators, so you are going to play around such things. Okay. So you can find the address of these web elements from this elements, you know, uh, element source. Okay. So you can find the X paths. You can find the CSS locators. So we will come to that part later, but I just shown you the possibility that how you can interact uh, with these elements, how you can find the addresses. Okay. So that was one way. Okay. Fine. Now uh, you are able to find the addresses of these elements. Now what to do? We have to put those addresses. We have to use those addresses, right? How to interact with these elements in an automated manner with the help of tools like Selenium, right? There are many other tools in the market, right? But why? Why Selenium? Because it's like we have Java and we have many other programming languages. But guys, I can uh, I can like make make sure you like I can give this surety that the support that you will find for Java. Okay. Uh, it will be more than any other programming language over the internet because it has been there from past time. Okay. And Java on the basis of Java, many legacy systems are created, right? So I'm not guaranteeing this, but I know that uh, even if you type simply like uh, like uh, exception. Simply say NPE exception in Java. Okay. So you get the documents. You get the stack overflow, right? You have a lot of support, a lot of support for Java, right? Similarly, Selenium has been into the market of UI test automation since a long time. So that is the biggest advantage of Selenium. It has been in the market since a long time. It's a very popular tool. Okay. So the one point that I just wanted to, uh, you know, tell you about what is UI test automation basically to automate these scenarios. Okay. Of putting the test here by writing some code. Okay. So that is UI automation. You have to write some code. You have to use the libraries like selenium and you need to interact with these elements to make sure that what you saw yesterday is present today okay and why automation is important every day you as a human being you are not going to like make it manual intervention and uh, just come again and just see that this link is clickable or not this login link is clickable or not this login button is working or not. When I click on this eye icon, it is like the cross that has come on this eye icon. It's coming or not. So there are many checks, right? Manual QA time is like now gone, right? I mean, still there are many companies who are working on manual 
task because maybe they have more features and uh, they don't have time to automate the things but now it's a time overall globally that we should work on some automation so that it makes your life easy right that is why automation is important and ui automation is also important right because we have many things to check here and things can break it will lead us to bad customer experience right now enough of theory on what is automation and what is ui automation i feel you guys know that the benefit of automation is to reduce your own work and to save your own time right so now uh, next point on the agenda right so what is selenium and why it is important so i told you that selenium has a great support in market okay like i am not promoting selenium here but we are going to learn it so i should explain you why we are going to learn it right because as i mentioned that when you search something for java on google you will get a lot of help similarly when you search something for selenium on google you will get a lot of help and you have this selenium dev website also completely available for you okay uh, the the documentation the downloads okay the library you can you can just refer this website and you can get the help from here right but but the thing is before you come to this website you need to learn some things right and then you will be able to utilize the resources provided on this website easily right so so basically you can see some code is already available in java here to get you started right so hello selenium if i copy this code a simple code that can help you in in simply uh, opening the browser automatically going to this website automatically and closing the browser automatically okay very simple code i'll just copy and uh, paste in our uh, demo session project okay i will remove this code from here i'll just paste it okay so i have added selenium 4 library i think it's not working so we'll talk about it later fine so this is the website right so now why selenium it has good support it's free right it java it supports java python c sharp ruby javascript kotlin multiple programming languages support right you can run the uh, what what is selenium first of all it is a library okay it is a library where some code is already written for you you don't need to you know click on chrome browser for running the tests in automated manner selenium will do that for you it will simply open the browser okay and run your code of interacting with the website simply let's let's go to this code let's let's understand what is this it is like doing you are creating an instance of web driver basically the selenium web driver then you are opening the website then you are closing the browser or closing the browser window okay so in three lines of code okay only three lines of code is required to go to this website just check that the website is reachable or not is it a test so just checking that when you navigate to this website is the page loaded successfully or not it's a kind of test right it's a reachability test you are getting 200 okay or not right or some some properties you can check of this page which will tell you simply that the page is loaded okay sometimes the websites are even not loaded for you okay so that test passes in this scenario of just three lines of code okay so it's easy to use from a automation engineer point of view that is why selenium is also important documentation support it's very easily available okay uh, you can get readily ready made code at many places but i would suggest first write it yourself and when you are stuck just look for the community support just you know for selenium you just have to write uh, x path in selenium okay so you you have many many things right you have many support here you can do google you will get the you know community support is very important thing for a tool okay there are many other tools in in market 
but they have less community support and that is why you know at a complex level when we reach like somebody asked that how should we get started uh, then guys when you reach a complex level na at that time you really need a quick solution which should be available for a tool and i'm telling you from my experience i have never liked other tools and i have never uh, you know felt that it's as easy as using selenium i know selenium has its own limitations you can only automate the web applications okay with selenium you can automate web applications that is ui of a web application only okay that is a maybe a limitation of selenium but we don't want anything else right uh, why, why do i need i can use some third party libraries also along with selenium and get the job done right because it's something that is my main objective of performing the test automation of this ui that is my main objective and i am able to achieve with the help of selenium okay which is easy to use for me and i have like help available everywhere on google or in person in my office right so experts are available there who have already used selenium uh, around you you will find definitely many people and of course you are going to get resources who who know selenium apart from other tools okay so it's easy to find uh, you know a job and also the person who does this job okay so so yeah selenium is popular and easy to use that's what i just wanted to explain and uh, why it is important okay so how to add selenium library and how to get started with selenium okay so there are two ways now if as a beginner you will you will start writing the code in a simple java project so definitely you are going to add libraries manually in your project and if you are experienced person who know what is a maven project right we are going to cover up that thing in a uh, in the course that we have okay so basically a maven project is something where you just have to copy some xml dependency i'll show you <clears throat> so i just have to write on google that selenium maven dependency okay so this is a maven repository a kind of uh, uh, simply you can say a repository where libraries are uploaded and the address of those libraries is in a xml format okay so you have to copy this xml dependency that is basically the address to the library and you need to mention in the maven project so maven project is also a java project but it's a kind of java project okay another kind of java project the java project let's create one maven project i have installed maven on my machine how you can install that you can also go to like google and just type install maven right there are steps available to install maven download and install it okay so i will share this link in the chat window you can follow these steps okay we are going to repeat these steps okay uh, while taking the other sessions that are going to happen in future okay so don't worry so just go to this link follow these steps to install maven for creating a maven project on your machine you need to have maven installed first okay so i already have the maven installed i have set this home variable okay java home variable and maven home variable okay i have already set that on my machine and uh, installation guide is there i have shared with you okay now the next thing let's go to the idea intellij and create a new project okay now i am getting the option of project creation so i'll click on maven you see the maven option i am getting so basically i am getting this because i have installed uh, the maven on my machine okay so now i can create a project from an archetype archetype what is archetype in a maven project basically it's an existing structure of projects like i told you earlier like when you create a building a house 
you create it with the help of a structure, right? So a project structure is also something that is needed to maintain the files that you are creating in the project, right? So Maven has many existing structures available. So we will select the quick start one. Okay, this is a archetype that is quick start. So I have selected this. I will click on next. Fine, I'll just give it a name that is December underscore 2022 demo project. Okay, so I'll say next. I'll say finish. Fine, my Maven project is being created. Now, while the Maven project gets created, basically what happens, there are some existing libraries which are needed by this project. So now you can see here, you know, dependencies are being resolved. Okay. You can see my mouse hovering at the bottom. So here the dependencies which are being resolved. Uh, basically, the dependencies are the libraries which are automatically getting added to this project to support our code. Okay. The helper libraries. Okay. Don't worry. It's not complex. It's very simple. Just creating a project, nothing else. And uh, <clears throat> going forward, you guys will be able to understand these things in the upcoming sessions. Okay. So <clears throat> our, sorry, my throat is having some problem. So our project is ready now. Okay. You see the build is successful. Fine. We are going to explain you the Maven life cycle also. Very good, important. Uh, I mean, very important interview question that is what is Maven life cycle. Okay. So now I have a source folder. I have main and I have test. So you see, this is the structure of a Maven project. Simply very easy to, you know, maintain something. Main will contain the development code. Test will contain the test code. Okay. Even developers nowadays around the world use Maven project. In my company also, we are using Maven project. Right. So, I mean, just telling you that how popular it is. Okay. So now going to the test where we need to add our code. So we already have a app test class ready. So it is having this at the rate test, uh, very basic test case that is simply saying that assert true assert means a check assert equals to check true. Okay. And we are providing the value true. So this test is going to pass because there is a function called as assert true, which needs a Boolean argument. Basically a condition X equals to Y is true or false. So we are already providing a value that is true. So this test will pass. Okay. But we don't need to worry about this test. Okay. So for now I will remove this code from here. I have a function which is having name should answer with true. So I will rename this function. I will simply say a uh, simple test fine. So simple test is my function name. The class name is app test by default. This class was created. So I'm just adding some lines of code. Now web driver driver equals to new Chrome driver driver dot get and driver dot quit. Okay. So when I will be able to write this code successfully, when I'll have the Java library of Selenium. So you need to go to this pom dot XML. Okay. Of this Maven project. Okay. And inside this, you will find the dependencies tag. Okay. From line number 21 to 28. This is a dependencies tag. Okay. Dependency basically means the address of the libraries which are going to be pulled into your project on runtime. You don't need to add the libraries manually anymore. Okay. So just get the Selenium uh, library dependency. We have seen that earlier. So let's get that. So we are going to use Selenium 4 as I mentioned earlier in the upcoming sessions. First, we will talk about Selenium 3, then we will do the migration and then we will learn Selenium 4. Okay. So this is my Selenium 3 dependency. Okay. Then once I have added the dependency here, so you have to add it. Make sure you are adding it after this tag dependencies. Okay. Because this is a single dependency inside these dependencies tag. Okay. Fine. Then you need to click on this icon that you are able to see here. 
that is M and the circular icon. Just click on this. Fine. So now you have successfully uh, added the dependency and it is being resolved. Okay. So what you will be able to see in this external libraries now is the library of Selenium. So, you know, a good thing in idea IntelliJ is just click anywhere on the left panel here. Okay. And type so that whatever you are trying to search, it will be searched for you. Okay. Just type it. S E L E N I U M Selenium. Okay. So you see, I'm able to find the libraries by just typing in the left panel. So just a shortcut to find something. Okay. So just a file. Let's say you are trying to find a file somewhere. Just type it. Okay. Now the Selenium library is automatically loaded. Let's write our Selenium code, which is very short and sweet. So I'll say web driver. Okay, you see automatically I'm now getting a suggestion web driver. Driver. Equals to new. Chrome driver. Okay. Fine. Now I will say driver dot get. Okay, so instead of switch to it's just a get function get. And I will simply go to www dot testology dot in okay and then driver dot quit fine very simple driver dot quit and in case you want to add assertion i will teach you later that okay but just using these three lines of code automatically the web driver will be opened we will go to the testology dot in and then we will close the web driver or what we call as a Chrome browser. Okay, because I'm using Chrome browser. Now Selenium supports various types of browsers. Also Selenium is like you can write test automation for you know, um, Chrome browser edge Firefox Mo uh, Mozilla Firefox basically uh, Safari. So many browsers are supported by Selenium. So it's not just Chrome browser, but it's easy to test on. I mean, because I have Chrome browser installed on my machine. So that is why I'm using Chrome browser right now. Okay. And uh, once you learn Selenium, you will be easily able to perform mobile app automation. Why? Because Appium is another tool that is related to Selenium. And the way you write code by using this Selenium tool is similar in Appium that is used for mobile app testing test automation, right? So basically learning Selenium is going to help you in performing mobile automation also because that will not be too difficult for you to learn. Okay. So it's an advantage when you learn Selenium. Okay. So now this code will not run. Why I'll tell you uh, we have added the library. We have written this three lines of code. But one important thing is also that we need is a driver that is a physical executable i mean file that is basically a resource that you need so what i'll do i'll create a resources folder now that is not important you can simply add the driver here also okay in this test directory but i will make this project a little bit structured so i will add a directory here that is called as resources automatically i'm getting a suggestion here that is resources fine so I'm adding a resources directory here. Here I will go to Google. Then uh, I will say I will check my, uh, you know, version. So version of my browser. So I have this about Google Chrome. Fine. So I have version 108.0. So I will check this. I, I, I have to get the driver. So driver for Google Chrome version 108. Now this file is going to act like a browser in your automation. Okay, so web driver for Chrome downloads. Okay, now you are able to see many versions here. 
okay many versions because many people are using different versions of chrome browser but on a version of browser on which you want to run the tests run the scenarios that you have to select from here now what is web driver like you you might get confused that selenium web driver is also there and you are now downloading chrome driver so selenium is an interface you can think of chrome driver is the actual file okay so uh, basically selenium triggers this chrome driver okay so i will download this one uh, what was my version exactly let me check that okay so settings not settings exactly i i want to check about google chrome so go to help because there are two versions of 108 so 05359.125 so the one i am looking for here yeah 5359.125 i think this should support one this one okay so i'll download this okay i have to select for windows so this is chrome driver underscore win win 32 dot zip so i will download this one i will expand this okay go to downloads okay i hope this is downloaded now so i will unzip this just give me one minute so i'll just unzip this thing and show you what is inside the zip file that we have downloaded so what is inside the zip file is this thing that is chrome driver.exe so i'll copy this from here and paste inside my project okay so inside the resources folder i will paste this okay let me copy paste okay you can go to the explorer of this resources folder and i will paste the driver inside this so fine the chrome driver the zip file that we downloaded basically we have extracted the chrome driver from there and pasted inside this uh, you know uh, resources folder okay now we need to set the property so we will say uh, driver dot set okay so we basically need to set a property where uh, we can simply you know refer the file that we have okay the driver so i can say system okay we'll see we'll have a property that is name is system dot set property and we'll have this property like here the path will come which we have inside this resources chrome driver.exe copy the path so you will say copy path and uh, for now i will get the exact path of it okay So I hope this property path is correct. We'll just cross check it. So now with just these four lines of code, we are going to navigate to this website and we are going to, so you know what I'll do? I just add some sleep time so that it will, because this process is too quick, you will not even able to notice that you navigated to this website and the Chrome browser got closed okay so i'll just add a thread dot sleep here to wait for at least 10 seconds okay and see that 
the browser opened we navigated to this website and uh, then the website and browser got closed okay so i'll add a try or we can you know simply milliseconds fine so let's run this so you have this run button here now simply what is happening in this code uh, basically web driver dot uh, like this particular line of code is creating a new instance of chrome driver okay and uh, then i think we should set this property first before uh, yeah before triggering the web driver okay and then run the chrome driver oh okay, you got the exception like that only because it was unable to find the property having the value of chrome driver okay that is the exception that we got in the error so we are going to talk about exception tracing also in the upcoming sessions so guys uh, don't miss those sessions okay uh, a complete batch of uh, selenium uh, will be started okay and uh, we will teach you more there and uh, this error that we are getting i think this is <laughs> it is telling us to add https https colon forward slash forward slash i think this time it will work fine because we didn't give it https that is why we got the exception okay okay you see automatically the browser got opened okay now the line that is driver dot get okay it is okay why it was unable to take us there let's give it http then i think https is not working with this site fine so you need to make sure that you are giving the right protocol so http has didn't worked here so now we are giving http i hope that will work because we are getting http client exceptions only so this time it has worked fine okay so successfully the website is loaded right we can add the checks also but i think we have already surpassed our time so we will not add any assertions here okay successfully it's loaded now automatically the browser got closed okay our test is passed you can see a green check here now the window was not opened in a maximized format if you want to do that it's very simple uh, you can simply say driver dot window uh you have driver dot manage dot window dot maximize okay if you add this statement here fine it will open the browser in a maximized format let me help you in running that again so as more lines of code you will add the better your test case will get executed okay but it's very short and sweet the code you can see in just four lines of code you are able to uh, perform a scenario of uh, checking the site is reachable or not okay now the uh, window has opened in a maximized format so that is the beauty of selenium um, you you know this code that i have written is is a very basic code and uh, you guys i hope you are able to understand because what we have learned till now is like uh, this is a variable that we have created and uh, this is the property that i am setting just a path of this driver so that selenium will look up for the driver file at this path okay then we are creating a variable of web driver then we are just maximizing the window by calling the methods in a chained manner okay and then we are navigating to the website 
then we are waiting for 10 seconds then we are closing the browser okay that is the simple code okay i hope you guys uh, learned a lot from this session and uh, we are going to learn more in the upcoming sessions thank you for joining today's session guys uh, i hope you will join join the upcoming sessions okay thank you for joining today any queries you have i will definitely try to solve them now okay we will discuss them now let me allow you to unmute yourself thank you guys